Hello YouTube, this is a quick update to my system. Um, just now getting in from work. I'm going to close that out. Okay. But anyway, um, just wanted to give you a quick update. A couple of people have actually asked that I do a video on my, uh, my unit that I have. Um, that basically is um, a supercapacitor. Someone asked, what is a supercapacitor and what is the effectiveness and the usage behind or practical application behind it being a part of my battery bank system? And I'm going to quickly and simply just explain it as this. Um, this battery bank, uh, when rated and pulling an average load, is going to pull a heavier load than it needs to because of the chemical transaction that has to take place. And it uses a lot more energy all at one time to provide that bulk um, amperage or wattage whatever is needed to make the amps actually to equal out but anyway basically it draws on the batteries a lot more than it actually needs to to grab that power right up front now why is it important in my system well when you have things like compressors and and um, you know random uh, timers turning on on high um, wattage loads basically you're going to have a spike in amperage all of a sudden to equal out those um, watts the only problem with that being is if for instance there's a 150 watt load um, the batteries on a typical system might drop down as low as 12 volts and then put out as many amps as it takes to get it up to the 150 watts now it's a real easy equation w equals a times v so watts equals amps times um, voltage but obviously the lower the volts go the higher the amount of amps they have to go through um, the more likely um, that the, the chemical um, reaction has to sulfate the batteries um, I mean, I have a desulfator built onto my system. It turns on and off every now and again. But either way, basically, when you have a heavy load like that hooked directly up to your inverter, what's going to happen is it's going to drain on your batteries directly and quickly. Um, and in my experience, it worked. I mean, the batteries are designed to work and give a charge like that. They're just not designed to do that over and over. In fact, that actually limits their lifespan somewhere around uh, 300 cycles. Um, per the research that I did, it's going to limit it somewhere around 300 cycles. With the, um, the capacitor bank being that I'm not really deeply discharging my batteries, that should keep my battery somewhere around a three-year, maybe four-year time span completely off-grid. Um, for the batteries that I'm using. I didn't go very deep into um, going in $500, you know, batteries. I actually went and bought mine from Sam's Club and um, sometimes Advanced Auto, just different deals that I got from different people. But anyway, let me show you what the supercapacitor looks like. Uh, basically what I did, uh, I'm not sure if you can see this. This is the supercapacitor that I've wired up. It's hidden behind these wires here. Like I said, I'm still kind of fusing everything out and working on um, finishing up the migration um, from the other room. I still have a couple more solar power things to hook up and I actually have a su super cool idea that I'm running on my wind turbine that's going to involve a supercapacitor also. But anyway, this uh, supercapacitor bank is 12 2600 farad um, Maxwell uh, capacitors that are rated at 2.7 volts. I have six of those wired up in series to produce or at least have a capacitance of about 15 volts at 2600 farads. Being that I have 12 of them, I have uh, two banks of 15, basically giving me a 5200 farad bank. I know that capacitance isn't necessarily measured in that particular way, but basically you can look at it as two separate capacitors hooked up in parallel. Um, I chose to wire mine in 15 volts, pending that my configuration actually is a 12 volt system. Um, if you are familiar with battery system or if you've had experience with them, you realize that when a battery is charging, the bo voltage has to go well above the standard 12 volts for the, um, the um, charging process to actually take place. 
um, it needs to break down the the sulfation. It needs to get the chemicals blending again, and obviously you got to desulfate the batteries. Things like that have to happen. For that to happen, we usually charge controllers, raise the battery voltage to somewhere around 14.8, sometimes 14.9 volts. Now, if you pay attention, I just said that my capacitors are rated at 15 volts. Um, the reason that I didn't want to wire my entire bank into a 20 volt system is because pretty much as the battery, or I'm sorry, as the capacitors fill up, um, the voltage basically um, goes up as the amount of amps um, increases or the amount of ferrets are filling up. So obviously I wouldn't want to have a 20 volt system that will never ever fill up. So I would be using less and less of the capacitance of the actual system. So if that makes sense to you, I'm hoping it did. But um, just to recap, I didn't want to use the 20 volt system because basically I would never get it anywhere near 20 volts. I would only cap it out at 15 and I'd be wasting um, wasting a lot of my energy um, just sitting there just having the ability to double up and I would never do it unless I actually upgraded my system to more so like a, a um, 24 volt or 36 volt system um, but anyway um, I got my super duper thing I call it super duper but anyway I have my uh, 6000 watt pure time wave inverter below my 1200 watt right now I don't have the 6000 watt hooked up um, Basically, I'm running a new zero gauge wire over here. If you can see, I'm actually um, hammering out my terminals. Uh, but anyway, that video was about the supercapacitors. Um, I'm going to make another video quickly after this one before it gets dark. If you have questions, comments, comment below.